different kinds of questions that come up in real life. Where do exponential equations and logarithmic equations come from? And there's sort of two different things that I put up here, exponential growth or exponential decay or half-life. These are places where we use exponents and logarithms in our equations. So population, population growth is usually exponential. And we're going to look at some examples with that. We've already looked at a few examples with compound interest, but some other things like earthquakes. When you have an earthquake of, you know what they say, it's a 7.2. And then someone else has an earthquake and it's an 8.2. How are those similar? Well, 8.2 is bigger than 7.2. Wonderful. But how much bigger? How do they measure that? It's on an exponential scale. So when you go from a 7.2 to an 8.2, the 8.2 is 10 times more intense than the 7.2. And a 7.2 is 10 times more intense than a 6.2. So when someone has an 8.2 earthquake, another person has a 6.2 earthquake, there's like, oh, you guys were only too higher. That's 100 times more intense. So it goes up a lot. So we use exponential and logarithmic scales when things go up a lot, when you're trying to compare things that have a big difference between the smallest thing you need to look at and the largest thing you need to look at. So something like sound, decibels. Decibels work on an exponential scale as well. Going up by 10 decibels is 10 times the amount rather than just up by 10. And then exponential decay, that's looking at radioactive substances or the amount of drug in your body. Your body gets rid of drugs, some drugs. So for example, let's say you take a Tylenol and then four hours later you still have your headache and it says on the bottle you can take two pills every four hours. Well, why does that happen? Well, your body gets rid of some of the Tylenol in those four hours. It might be that it gets rid of half of it. So if you take 1,000 milligrams, four hours later, you still have your headache, you take two more pills, and you take another 1,000, your body got rid of half of the drug, but you still have 500 milligrams of Tylenol in your body. You take two more drugs, now you have 1,500 in your body. Four hours later, you, your body gets rid of half of it. You now have 750 in your body, and you take two more pills, and now you get to a higher amount. And so we'll look at, well, what does that mean? And because of that half-life of drugs in your body, they can do things like test for steroids in the Olympics because your body is getting rid of the drug, but there will still be a percentage of it left as it gets rid of it. So we're going to do a bunch of questions using these modeling. We're going to start with our compound interest formula, which you've seen before. Uh, I think we had different letters the last time we saw it. But again, any time you get a question on your exam, a formula will be given to you. You don't know what letters. They could change all the letters up, but they'll explain what each of the letters stand for. So here we've got our compound interest formula. This is going to be fairly straightforward at the beginning. Determine the final value of $500 after 10 years if it's invested at a rate of 2.25% and compounded monthly. So what I want you to do, because this is the thing that's going to happen to you on an exam, you're given a new formula, the things are explained to you, and you have to be able to take those things and put them into the formula. Got one? So that's your job. I give you a 30 second head start to put this information into the formula. How did he do? Yes. And then when you go to figure this out, the nice thing about your calculator, 
For this equation, the A was already by itself, so you can type it in exactly as you see it. So 1 plus, notice the interest rate is put in as a decimal divided by 12 to the power of 12 times 10. So try typing this into your calculator all at once to see if you get the same amount. So you invested $500, 10 years later you have $626 and how many cents? Three cents. Nice. Easy question, didn't have to worry about Again, this one was easy because you could just plug everything in. What are we going to be using our logs and our, and our skills for? Well, notice that this question has, or this formula has exponents. And some of the things that you're going to be asked to solve for are solving for the time, and time is in the exponent. So that's coming up. Here's another one to calculate the final value. This one is straightforward. We're going to skip this one. You can do it later on your own. But here we've got one that says calculate the time it's going to take to double. So again, we need to put everything in. And it says we've got a $30 investment, so that's our principal. It's going to double, so this is going to be 60. 1 plus interest rate of 7% compounded monthly, and we don't know T. Earlier in the unit, we did this by typing this into Y1 and this into Y2 and finding out where they intersected. On your exam, they're going to most likely add algebraically, so you can't solve it with your graphing calculator. So now we have to be able to solve this using our log laws. And we're solving for T. It's in the exponent. When we wanted to solve for something in the exponent, we took the log of both sides. Notice that we have 30 times this. You're going to find that life is a little bit easier with your logs if you can simplify your ex equation first. It's not wrong if you take the log of both sides already, but I would suggest dividing both sides by 30. If we divide both sides by 30, this equation just becomes two equals. And there's something fascinating about this. Okay? For example, what's fascinating about this is if I had 300 and I doubled it to 600, can you see that I would get the same equation after I divide by 300? Or if I had $3,000 and doubled it to $6,000, when I divide, I will get two, because it's doubling. If I said this was three cent, 30 cents that I invested, and I wanted to know when I would get 60 cents, I could divide both sides, and you'll get two. And because no matter what values you have here, 30 million, 60 million, when it simplifies, you'll always get that two. And what's powerful about this is with compound interest, it will take the same amount of time for something to double no matter what value you have. Which is crazy. Because that means if you invest $1 and you want it to double, let's say at 7%, let's say it takes 10 years, you go to your bank 10 years later, you're like, $2. You're so happy. Meanwhile, someone with a lot of money puts $10 million into the same bank account. You both go back at the same time 10 years later. They give you your $2. They give the other person $20 million. They can make a million dollars a year doing nothing just because they have that amount of money. So if you have money with compound interest, it doesn't matter how much you have. It's going to take the same amount of time to double. So it's very powerful if you have a lot of money to start with rather than just a little bit of money. Now, in this case, we haven't solved this yet. We need to solve for t. t is in the exponent. So we're going to take the log or natural log of both sides. 
once we take the log of both sides, our log loss says since this 12t is the exponent to the whole thing, we could bring that in front. And now our t is out of the exponent. If we wanted to get t by itself, what's happening? t is multiplied by 12. It's multiplied by log 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 12, which is just a number. So we can divide both sides by 12 log 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 12, and you get t by itself. And I'm going to teach you a shortcut to look at this number and estimate it in your head. So without your calculator, log 2 divided by 12, log 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 12 is about? No? Okay, no, the mental math doesn't work here very well. Okay, well I'm going to say I think it's going to be around 10. Let's see how close we are. So again, use your fraction button if you have it. On the top of our fraction, we have log of 2. On the bottom, we have 12 log bracket. Oops, it already had a bracket. 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 12 bracket. 12. Enter. 9.9. .9. Oh, 10 was a pretty good estimate. Nice. So it's going to take 9.93 years to double. And that would be true whether you initially invested 10 cents. 9.93 years later, they would give you 20 cents, which wouldn't be that exciting. You'd probably do better looking in the hallways here at the school for money than waiting for your investment. Or if you had $10 million, 9.93 years later, you have $20 million. So if you have a lot of money, you, don't, you wouldn't even have to work. It would just, the interest would pay you your, your salary. And so because of things like this, we have in our world an opportunity for the rich to always get richer and the poor to, to, to make the divide between rich and poor bigger and bigger and bigger. Because if you have a lot of money, it'll just create more and more money. And if you don't, if you're under that threshold of what you need to survive, then you're going to stay there. So the mathematics is so showing why some of these things can happen. OK, how did I estimate this to be 10? I am going to introduce you to something called the rule of 70. And sometimes it's called the rule of 72. It just depends on what makes your math easier to do mental math. The rule of 70 or the rule of 72 is an estimate for how long it's going to take something to double. All you do is your time is going to be 70 divided by your interest rate, not as a decimal. So when I had 7% interest, what's 70 divided by 7? 10. Such a simple formula. If, if my interest rate was 8%, I'd probably use the rule of 72, because 72 divides nicely by 8. 72 divided by 8 is 9. So if you get a higher interest rate, it's going to take less time to double. If you had a low interest rate, like 4%, I would probably use the 72 because 72 divides nicely by 4. At 4%, it's going to take 18 years to double. It's a huge difference because let's say you had $1,000. Your friend gets 8%, you get 4%. 18 years later, you have 
your friend has four thousand dollars because theirs has doubled twice in that time every nine years it doubles which is really powerful so whenever the main thing I want you to take out of interest rates is when you're getting money via interest or whether you're paying money because someday you're going to take out a loan either to buy a car that's probably the closest thing you're at right now the next thing you're going to take out a bigger loan a mortgage to buy a house that's a huge thing the interest rate is what's going to be the most important factor when you're borrowing money you want to make that interest rate as low as possible because that's going to be what's going to cost you a lot of money. And we're going to do some questions with those things as well. So this is a quick way to estimate the rule of 70, rule of 72, quick way to estimate how many years it takes for something to double just based on the interest rate. And it's just an estimate. Obviously, our answer was 9.93, right? And the actual answer and our estimate would be 10, but that's pretty close. So it gives you a good estimate. Um, this one is relatively straightforward. If we plugged everything in, four years ago, invested at 5%. It's now worth 2,500. So you have to plug things in. Compounded quarterly is four times a year. four times four and so what you're trying to solve for isn't in the exponent so if you wanted to get P by itself you could just divide by that number type that into your calculator exactly as you see it and you'll figure out how much he originally invested We won't do the calculations right now. You can do that on your own if you like. But here's one I would like you to try. And I'm going to do this in two different ways because coming around and checking things, I noticed two different solutions. So I'll do one solution in green and one solution in blue. I'll split it up with a black line here. The green solution, if you decided, yeah, if you decided to divide both sides by 200 to begin with, you would get 5 over 2 or 2.5. This is the green solution. There we go. 2.5 equals 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 4 to the 4t. Now if I take the log or natural log of both sides, because that exponent of 4t is to the entire thing, you can bring it out in front using your log law. Once that exponent is out in front, now t is no longer in the exponents. You can divide both sides by 4 and log 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 4. That'll equal t. Going to your calculator, using your fraction button, we have log of 2.5 divided by oops, 4 log 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 4. And we get t is equal to 30.65. How do I know if this is right? I guess it'll be 6, 6 if it's rounded correctly. Well, I can store this as x. I can plug it back into my original equation 200 times 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 4 to the power of 4x. And if that's equal to 500, whoa. Oh, I forgot the plus sign. 
So right now we know it's wrong, but we recognize that I forgot a plus sign in there. And if it's equal to 500, we know we've done it right. Okay, so 30.66 is the correct answer. The blue method, I saw a number of you, some of you divided both sides by 100 to begin with. Some of you took the log right away. I'm going to just take the log right away because they're both the same. When you take the log right away, whether this is a 5 and a 2 or a 500 and a 200, you're very tempted to bring that 4t out in front because that's why we take the log of both sides, to bring that exponent out in front. But we have to be careful because that exponent of 4t is only to this. That exponent of 4t doesn't affect the 200. So first of all, we have to recognize that in our skills to expand completely, we have to use our product rule and our quotient rules first before we can use our exponent or power rule. So the first thing I have to do here is say something times something inside of a log is the same as adding. And now that exponent of 4t is an exponent to the entire thing that's inside the log. So now I would be able to bring that 4t out in front. So if you had the 5 and the 2, as some of you did, you would just have log 5 and log 2. in exactly the same way. Now that my 4t is out, I want to get my term with a t all by itself. So I would subtract log of 200 on both sides. And now to get t all by itself, I could divide, divide by the 4 and the log and I get that expression. I'm going to type that expression into my calculator. I'm going to cheat a little bit because I've typed that whole thing in earlier. There it is. I'm just going to change the top. So we have log 500 minus log 200. We're going to see, do we get the same 30.657? And we do. So there's two ways of going about this. Notice simplifying earlier in the green method by dividing both sides right away by that 200. Whenever I have a coefficient there, my writing is a lot less logs because I don't have to use that product rule. Taking the log right away still is the right method, but you're going to have to remember that when you have a product, you have to add first before you can bring that exponent out in front. It means you're writing a lot more logs, but you do get the same answer in the end. So it's your choice on what you want to do. And sometimes you don't even choose. You just do something, and then you have to work with it. But if you do simplify early, your life is a little bit easier. OK, here's another one. Again, get you to do it on your own, and show me when you've got it right. Now, the whole purpose of me saying earlier that big speech about 10 cents to 20 cents or 10 million to 20 million was sometimes on a final exam, they'll give you a question like this. Calculate time it'll take to triple, and you feel like when you're putting in the values, you don't know how much money you had. You don't know how much it's going to be equal. We do know that the interest rate is 5%. It's compounded monthly, and we want to solve for t. So initially, there's a problem. There's three things that we don't know in this question, and you can't solve an equation when there's three things that you don't know. 
So a couple of things that I saw from you guys. I saw some of you choose an arbitrary value, like 10 here and tripled would be 30. And that works every single time. And it doesn't matter what numbers you pick. So I saw 10 and 30. I saw 20 and 60. I saw 1 and 3. No matter which one you do, it'll work out. I also saw people put x and 3x. That'll also work. But no matter what values you put in there, when you do the simplification by dividing both sides, so let's say we did 10 and 30, and I divide both sides by 10, I'm going to get 3 equals 1 plus 1.05 divided by 12 to the 12 t. And I'll get that 3 no matter what. So you could just start with that 3. Yeah, that's fine. Because that's sort of like starting with a 1 and a 3. If you started with the x and the 3x, it's a little bit tougher to say, I have to divide both sides by x. But it still works. We still get the 3 equals. So do you notice when things double, it's always 2 equals? When things triple, it would be 3 equals. If you'd like to find out how much time it would take to quadruple, it's 4 equals. What would be 7 times? Sep septuple? I don't know. That sounds like I'm making up a word. But it sounds fun. Oh, can't wait for my investments to septuple. At this point, it becomes just like any other question. Just because I haven't done it for a while, I'm going to use the natural log. So taking the natural log of both sides, and notice I skipped a step. You see the step that I skipped? I brought the 12t out in front right away. As you do more of these, you might start skipping that step as well. But you have to be careful that there's no number in front, because then you have to use your product rule first. And at this point, natural log of 3 divided by 12, natural log of 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12. And I am going to type this into my calculator just to show you and remind you that the natural log does the same thing. So natural log of 3 divided by 12, natural log 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12. And we get 22.02. I'm going to store this as x and check it. If I take 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12, divided by 12, to the power of 12x, it should equal 3. And it does. Nice. So these are compound interest formulas. You could be given any formula. So here are some new formulas that we'll look at. This is an interesting formula. It's a formula for continuous growth. It's often a formula that's used for populations. But since we just did interest formulas, we're going to start with that. How does the interest formula look like if instead of compounding monthly, which they pay you your interest every month, let's say they compounded it daily. So now you go to your bank account and each day it increases a little bit. And each day you get to make interest on the previous day's interest. So that's even better for you. Well, what happens if they, instead of deciding to compound it every day, they said, for you special today, we're going to compound it every hour. So you could be checking your bank account every hour, and every hour they give you a little tiny bit more. Okay? How many hours are there in a year? Lots. But, okay, there's 365 days in the year. You times that by 24, and 8,760. Okay? So let's just do a thought experiment and say, let's give you guys a really good interest rate. 10%. Let's say you have $1,000. So at 10% in a whole year, they owe you how much money? Mental math. This one you should do. What's 10% of 1000 $100. So in a whole year, you would get $100.
how much of that hundred dollars would you be eligible for in one hour? Well, you take your hundred and divide it by 8,760, because that's how many hours there are in a year, and you go and you check your bank account, and they have added 1.1 cents. So you're like, I just invested $1,000. One hour later, I have $1,000 and 1.1 and cents. And the next hour, they will give you another 1.1 cents on the $1,000. And then they'll also calculate how much money you should get on that 1.1 cents. Do you want to know? Yeah, you do. Okay. They will give you an extra decimal, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 cent extra the next hour. And you can dance in the hallways because you're going to be so rich. So even though the compound periods increase, the amount that you get is less because they have to divide that amount by how many compound periods there are. So now they, the bank says, we've got a special for you. Instead of every hour, we're going to give you it every second. And then someone says, no, we're just going to do it continuously. We're just going to always add money to your account all the time. Well, what would happen? How much is that going to increase? What happens to the formula? The crazy thing about the formula is that fancy number E shows up which is kind of fun. That E is 2.7 in this formula. The, the P, the R, the T, and the A are all parts of you know, amount, final amount, principal, interest rate, and time. But E is the number E. So it's kind of cool that your compound interest formula becomes a formula that uses the letter E. I call it the PERT formula. It's just sort of what it looks like. And now we're going to find out, well, what would happen? We're going to do part B first, continuous growth for money. You have 5.5% interest, one bank, you're the banker, and you could get interest compounded quarterly, or you could have your bank account increasing all the time continuously. So first of all, we're going to do B. We're going to find out what this is. Exciting, because we're going to be making so much money. How much money do we get if we had $2,000? Compounded quarterly, 1 plus 0 0.055 compounded quarterly. And we're keeping it in there for 10 years. So we can just quickly type this into our calculator. No logs necessary because everything is in numbers on this side. To the power of 40, 4 times 10, 3,200 eighty-seven dollars and twenty-three cents. Oh, five point five percent. I forgot the point five percent. You know how to use the insert button on your calculator when you do something like that? No? So I want to put a five in there, but if I push five right now, it just types over top. But if you go second insert, you can insert a number that you forgot. Three four five three decimal five four. So now you think, I could have the option of getting them to pay me interest all the time. And I would always be getting money and always making money on the money I just got a millisecond ago. And just be like growing and growing and growing. How much of a difference would that make? Estimates. More or less than 3,453. It's going to be more, right? Because you're getting your interest all the time rather than having to wait in chunks. So the more compounding periods you have per year, the more opportunity you have to make interest on interest. So it'll be more. How much more from going from four times a year to an infinite amount of times a year? What's your guess? Three cents more? Three million more? Lots? Little? Okay. I mean, we're going from four to infinite. That's a big increase. Would you agree? 
Have you ever gone from four to infinite on anything before? No. So this is crazy. So we're making a huge amount of increases in our compound interest how many times it is. The question is how much more money will that be? Well, we have to use our PERT formula. So our amount, we want to figure out. We originally started with 2,000 E. The interest rate is 0 0.055. Our time is 10. OK, are you guys prepared for disappointment? You ready? I mean, you probably usually, do you usually come to math class being prepared to be disappointed? Is that what happens? A little bit? It's like, oh, math. Oh. Anyways, OK, so today you officially can be disappointed. Let's plug this into our formula. 2,000 e to the power 0 0.055 times 10. 10 years later, from going from 4 to infinite, you will make almost $13 more. You should have been expecting a lot more, right? Because you went from 4 to infinite. And now we only get 3, 4, 6, 6.51. So no banks do this. No banks compound continuously, even though it doesn't make a big difference, right? People don't understand that big difference, that in the end, the money part in 10 years really doesn't make that much of a difference. Really, $13, I mean, it's more. Sure, someone came to me right now and says, can I give you an extra $13? I'd say, yeah, that'd be awesome. But in the big scheme of things, that's not a lot. And banks take more interest from people than they give out because they lend more money than people have. And so if they're taking more money and you went to one bank and they said, we're going to charge you interest continuously. We're always going to charge you. Every second we're going to take some more of your money and charge you some more and charge you some more and charge you some more on that. What will you do? You say, uh, I think I'll go to another bank. You know, because, I mean, it is more, right? $13 more in this case, but you don't want that. And you'd have the perception that it's a lot more, even though it's not very much. So most banks compound interest. When they're charging you interest, it's like daily or monthly. In the case of a mortgage, it's only two times a year. So it's not that much. OK, I am going to skip this one. It's not that bad. But we're going to do this one. I'll give you a head start. You're using the compound, I mean, you're using the PERT formula because it's the key word in my questions to use the PERT formula are the word continuously. The PERT formula used to be on your formula sheet. Now it's not. So if they got you to use the PERT formula, they would give it to you. So you wouldn't have to be able to recognize, like in the past, you'd have to recognize that since it said continuously, I need to use this formula. But now they would give you that formula. So I'll give it to you right now. And because it has the number e in it, and you're solving for time, how long will it take? Questions that have e in it, when you take the log of both sides, it actually is nicer to take the natural log of both sides because the base of natural log is e. So I want you to solve this one. I want you to use natural logs. And I'll put up the answer in a bit. So plugging in what we know, 2100 equals 1300 E, and then the rate is 0 0.053 T. Again, since we're multiplying, I would probably divide both sides by 1300 first. If I divided both sides by 1300 and simplified, I get 21 over 13. 
This just saves you a little bit of time. If you took the log of both sides originally, then you have to remember that this exponent is just to the e, and you'd have to add. Now I'm going to take the natural log of both sides, and that would allow this to come out in front. The nice thing about the natural log is what's the natural log of e equal to? One. So now when I'm solving for t, the only thing I would need to divide by, if you typed in natural log of e into your calculator, it would give you the same answer. But knowing that that's equal to one, simplifies your equation a little bit. When I go to my calculator, use my fraction, on the top I have natural log of 21 divided by 13. Wow. And on the bottom, 0 0.053. 9.05 as an answer. I'm going to check. I'm going to store that as x. I'm going to plug back into my original equation, 1300 e to the power 0.053x, does it equal 2100? No, because I did forgot the zero. 1300, whew, scary. e to the power 0.053x. <sighs> bad to get it wrong once. It's really bad to get it wrong twice in a row. So, whew. And so we know that, what was the answer? 9.05. That's how long it'll take. So that's where we're going to end for today.